Welcome along guys. Well I'm as excited as a schoolgirl at Christmas because finally my prayers have been answered and I have a full system going on to the H2. I'm sick of riding around being overly quiet. <laughs> it's time to get obnoxious. I am fitting the gorgeous Vandemon full titanium system modelled off of the H2R system. This thing is beautiful. Let's get it fitted. Oh, look at that. Full titanium modelled off of the H2R system. So exactly the same specifications, 48 millimetre downpipes, 1.2 millimetre titanium which is actually thicker than the H2R system because the H2R systems have been reportedly cracking and H2R owners have been buying the Vanderman as replacements. So thicker titanium, same thickness of pipes, potentially 300 plus brake horsepower achievable through this exhaust. Look at that sexy beauty. There's the full system all laid out. Now what this is, this is the polished version. Vandermon do a, a brushed or a polished version. This is the polished, which is the full copy of the, of the H2R system. The H2R titanium system is £8,000. £8,000. The Vandermon system is £1,800. And it's an improvement, a design improvement over the H2R system. So what I'll do, as usual, I will weigh all of this we compare it to the stock system which is coming off, but I'm expecting a massive, massive weight saving here. If you look at the welds on here, I mean, you can, you can barely even see where this thing is welded. It is phenomenal. It's a full system, but because the H2 is run so rich, which I mentioned before in the previous video I had it serviced, they run rich, so you can actually get away with fitting this without having to have it flashed or mapped. Obviously, in, I will get it flashed and mapped because that's the, the best way to get it to run properly. But I can run this without any mapping required. So uh, that's another massive bonus. Van Diemen or Van Demon? Van Diemen. Van Diemen sounds better. Before I fit the system, I just want to push the bike outside to see how noisy the standard system is. So just to take some video of the standard, get my dB meter out. Let's compare volumes between the standard and the Vandemon because I think the Vandemon is going to be noisy. You know, this is a, a race closed course system really. It comes with a dB baffle, but we'll see how noisy it is. We may end up having to leave that in. <laughs> the H2R is not known for its quietness. So, the bike is up on the ABBA stand, very carefully <laughs> put onto that after my incidents last time. So first jobs now, all the DB recordings done, lovely, very quiet <laughs> as expected. So now we've got to drop the exhaust off. I think this is a fairly big job to be perfectly honest, I've got to take the fairing panels off, I've got to obviously take all the exhaust system off, also got to deal with the servo motor which is behind the back of this. I think the actual motor's up under the tank. What I've done is I have uh, a Heeltech servo eliminator coming, because if you just unplug the servo motor, you're going to get errors on your dashboard to say the motor's disconnected. So I don't want that. So a Heeltech servo eliminator will get rid of those errors. Because I don't want to damage any of the panels, I've got my authentic 70s duvet out. <laughs> to rest the panels on as they come off the bike because the last thing I want to do is damage any more paint. You've got to be careful because the left-hand panel has got the water radiator bottle 
the left hand panel has got the rectifier inside of it. So you loosen the panel, then you've got the wires plugged in, you've got to try and get, get off while you've got the panel in your hand. So it's really not the easiest bike to work on this, you know. It's a bit of a pain in the bum. I think I'm gonna have to drain the coolant out of the rad, push it, strap it forward so I can get to the headers. But first of all, I think I'm gonna get the back box off. That's the first job I think, back box off. easy. Oh, so much better. That's one thing about putting this exhaust on, you, it opens up the whole back wheel so you can see it properly. What's the point of having a single-sided swinging arm if you can't see the wheel? But there we are, so back box off, that came over, that came off so easy. Must be because the bike's just got a thousand miles on it, just slipped straight off. Now that rear hanger, I don't think we need that hanger anymore, so that can also come off, that's not needed. Um, but now, let's get the main header section off so I can actually weigh everything and let's compare the weights once this is off. And to get the headers off, I'm going to have to drop the radiator forward so I'm going to probably crack these hoses here, crack that hose which is halfway down the other side, drain out the coolant, um, put it back in again, but it's only been there a thousand miles, there's no point changing the coolant, and then see if I can just pull this radiator forward enough to give me enough clearance to get a socket onto these. Tricky. Oh, reminds me. I need a wee. Oh, update, update. I've had to drop the rad completely and just sort of secure it. A bit of cardboard to fit tight to the front wheel, a bit of cardboard in to protect the fins, and I've been able to get access to the uh, the header bolts on this side. So I've just got to go around and do the other side now. But <laughs> you've got to make sure you've got enough room to be able to get back in and torque them up afterwards and get your you know get your torque wrench in there. with that before I can get it off. Jesus. Right, so let's weigh this huge monster of an exhaust and compare it to the weight of the Vanderman. I tell you now, the Vanderman's gonna be lighter. I can barely lift that. So, weigh time. It's heavy. That's without the heat shielding. 7.7 .7 kilos. Aha, that's off. 8.6. 8.6 kilos on the headers. 524 grams. 539. 479 grams. 484 grams. Link pipe one. 256. Link pipe two. 254. 559. 1538. There we go, ignore the flickery screen, but we've saved just over 11 and a half kilos off of the bike. Incredible. Well, hey, exhaust is removed. Time to get the new one on. What I've got, new gaskets. You can reuse the old gaskets, but I thought I'm not taking any chances with this job. We're going new. A little uh, tip I saw someone else mention. It's just put a little bit of engine oil around your gaskets and they just stay in place enough to get the headers on without them falling out. Top tip. <laughs> My knees. Everything is numbered on this one and two, three and four. So it's just a case of uh, joining out the numbers. This is why things have to be loose. At the headers, so you may have to do a bit of wiggleage. Oh, look at that. That is looking sexy. Come on, you bugger. When you're doing the lamp descent, so twist it the other way before screwing it in and then 
you won't end up with a really twisted lander once it's in. Ah, nice tip. Thank you, Eve. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, look at that. Now we're talking. What it seems we've got to do now is do a bracket from the rear footrest, sorry, from the, the footrest down to that little bracket here. So I've got to take some of this linkage off here, I think, to make a bracket to there. So the rear silencer's all bolted down, all the little brackets on. It's absolutely solid, that. That's a real good fit on there. Um, so I'm not gonna do now, I'm gonna put the springs on these bits, springs on the headers, and then I think it's just a case of bolting the headers in, put the springs on there, bolting the headers in, and then uh, putting the rad back on, filling them back with coolant, fairings back on. Time for a test. Oh, it's hard work, I am knackered. What this kit does come with, which is nice, is a spring puller. No more zip ties for me. Think of the dolphins. There we go, all finished, all torqued, installed, clips on. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. Beautiful, just gonna put the radiator back on now. And while I'm at the radiator, I've actually got an RNG rad guard to go on. So perfect opportunity to fit this as well. I'm just now going to clean the headers because obviously they're covered in fingerprints. So I'm going to use my da -da, my 11 pound bottle of uh, rubbing alcohol, spray it all down, wipe it down, get all the fingerprints off, all the grease off, and then it'll be lovely to blue up beautifully. Oh, I cannot wait. I can't wait to start it. We're getting close. Go on. Oh, custom fit guards. <laughs> I'm going to be needing them on this bike now. <laughs> so standard, I think it peaked at 91.5 dB. Revving it with the baffle in, it peaked at about 105. With the bike in the same position, the dB meter sat the same distance away from the bike. I've I've tried it with the baffle out, and it is literally hurts your ears just standing next to the bike. There's a little bit of video coming because I will test ride this on the road. That'll be the next video, but you can have to wait for that. But there's a little short clip coming up in a minute of how it sounds with the baffle out on the road. Bananas. So I will put a link to Vandermon's website in the description. They don't just do H2 exhausts. They do exhausts from many different sorts of bikes, even cars as well. And the quality of it is right up there with the best in the business. But there we go, guys. We will be going out for a non-road road test of this. Now she's run in. I've got 1,100 miles on it now. We've got the exhaust. We're going to go out and have an update. <laughs> see how fast it is. See how beautiful it sounds. But until that happens... Little sneak peek. Look at this. But I'll catch you later on, guys. Take care. Ciao.